Okay, so we'll get started with today's uh, topic, which is multi-arm bandit problems. Okay, and multi-arm bandit problem is a class of uh, stochastic optimization problem where something is unknown. Okay, uh, the so let me let me first introduce the model, and you will see why this class of problem is important. So <clears throat> the problem is as follows: How many of you know what a bandit is? Have how many of you have been to a casino? No one. Okay, three, four. Okay, good. Uh, how many of you know what a bandit is? No, no one. <laughs> well. You know those those slot machines where you put in the coin and then you keep pulling the lever and something happens. Okay, so that's a bandit. Okay, so so here is uh, here is the problem. You have so so the way it works is as follows. You have these are the machines. Okay, these are known as bandits. They they make very stupid sounds. Okay, uh, all the time. And uh, so there is a casino in, in Columbus, for instance, uh, Hollywood Casino. It's somewhere in South Columbus. Okay, uh, I have to admit I've been there. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, okay, so what happened? What happens in this? So well, you put some, let's say, ten dollars uh, uh, bill in each of these uh, each of these bandits, and then what do you do? Well, you have to pull the lever. Okay, at every point of time. You can walk to one of these bandits and you can pull the lever. Okay, and each bandit has a different reward distribution. This, let's say, the reward that you get from this particular bandit is uh, has distribution P1. So you have X1, which is distributed according to P1, X2, which is distributed according to P2, and X3, which is distributed according to P3. Okay, so they have different. Uh, distribution. If you pull the uh, pull this particular bandit, pull the arm of this bandit, you get a reward x1, which has a distribution p1, and the same thing. And every time you get an iid reward. Okay, so so x1 is independent of x2, which is independent of x3, and every time you pull it, you get a reward that is independent of all the past rewards. <coughs> now the problem is. As follows, you don't know what P1, P2, and P3 is. Okay. So, how do you decide which arm you are going to pull, right from time zero all the way up to time infinity? Okay. So that's the that's the question. How would you decide? I don't know what P1 is. I don't know what P2 is. I don't know what P3 is. Remember that in the Markov decision problems and many other problems that we have studied. We know the objective function exactly what the objective function is, right? If we are introducing random variables, we know exactly what the distribution of that random variable is, right? So that has been the setting so far in the entire class. Now I'm giving you a problem where you have random variables, but you don't know what the distribution of that random variable is, and I'm asking you to optimize. How would you go about doing it? So let's see. What are the applications? What are the real-world applications of this uh, this particular problem? You have three drugs. Okay, you are a doctor. You have three drugs: drug one, two, and three. And a patient comes in with a headache, and you don't know which of these drugs is going to be effective for that headache that the patient has. Okay, so you give him drug one. Next day, some other patient comes. You give him drug two. Third day, some other patient comes. You give him drug three. Okay, and so on. Okay, the doctor keeps administering drugs, uh, one of these three drugs to the patient, but eventually, what is the goal of the doctor? He wants to cure the patient, right? He wants to cure the patient of the headaches. So, how does he decide which drug to administer for the next patient that is in the queue, based on what information he has received about whether that drug that he administered to the patient in the past, whether that has been able to cure the headache or not? Okay, so that was the initial uh, initial motivation for studying this problem, and that dates back to 
33, maybe plus minus one, two years. Okay? So that's the first problem. Second problem, all of you probably use Facebook or Google or something. Okay, so there is a layout of that website, right? So you have photographs and you have news feed and advertisements and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, naturally, it's not, uh, it's not unreasonable to assume that Facebook and Google would have come up with various designs and then they zeroed in on a specific design that seems to make the best sense. Okay. Uh, you would be kind of surprised to know that Google runs probably 7,000 or 8,000 experiments every year with respect to very minor changes. What color of the web page should be? What color should be the advertisements in? How should the advertisements be displayed? Should there be an arrow next to the advertisement or not? And so on. Okay. So you have 10, you have three layouts of the web page. Which layout will yield maximum revenue? Okay. Maybe if you put the ads on the top, you get some revenue. The, the, re the revenue that you get has some distribution. If you put ads on the sidebar, you get some distribution. And you put ads in the bottom of the web page, you, you have some distribution of the uh, revenue that you can earn from having that particular layout. Okay? How would you decide which layout you should pick? Okay? Uh, you don't know what this P1, P2, and P3 is. Okay, you don't know what the reward distribution is. You don't know how humans make decisions about whether to click on an ad or not. Okay, there's no mathematical model for that. So, how would you decide, or how would you optimize the total reward you can get over a long period of time? So, the drug trial, web page design, ad placement. Uh, you move to a new city. You want to get the best. I don't know, vegetables and groceries for yourself. And there are 20 grocery stores in that city. How would you decide which grocery store you should go to every time you go and shop? Okay? Uh, based on the information that you might have received about what happened to the groceries you might have purchased past week or past to past week and so on. Okay? So in a lot of situations, you know that there are probability distributions according to which you are going to get the reward. You don't quite know what the probability distributions are. Okay? And somehow, based on the limited information that you have received so far, you need to make a decision about how do you maximize your expected reward. Okay? So that's the setting of multi-arm bandit. Okay? So drug trial, web page design, uh, um, and what else? ad placement. Uh, you know, many of these news websites, they are still trying to figure out where exactly to place the, place the ads. Maybe some of them have figured out where exactly to place the ads so that they can earn the maximum revenue through advertisement. Okay? So if you go to the news website, well, maybe some of you have visited news websites for 10 years or 15 years. So you kind of see the evolution of where exactly do they place their advertisement. And the reason why you see an ad at a specific location is because over a period of time, they have realized that if they place the ad at that particular location, they actually get maximum revenue from someone clicking the advertisement, okay? the users clicking the advertisement. So there is, this is going on in the background, and you, of course, don't know about it, but you are essentially uh, uh, helping them figure out what the probability distributions are every time you visit that web page and click on an advertisement. So, so that's the setting. Uh, what should we, how should we go about solving it? So, well, we need to formalize it as an optimization problem. Okay? So, what do you think should be, uh, let's formalize it. Okay? So, I have at every time t, uh, you decide to pull arm it, okay? and you get a reward x i t which is distribution distributed according to p i t okay of course i t is in 1 to capital k okay so there are k arms in this case k equals 3 what is the information that you receive h at time t 
that is the information x i 1, x i t minus 1, that is the information you have until time t. Based on this history, this is the reward, okay. So, x i 1 is a reward, x i 2 is a reward. So, x i 1 is a reward which is, uh, so you pulled arm i 1 at the first time step and you get x i 1 as the reward. And so, the goal is maximize total expected reward and the challenge is do not know p1 to pk ok. So, I want to qualify the statement I do not know what p1 to pk is but you might know something more than just any arbitrary distribution. So, for instance, you can say that these are all Gaussian distributions, but I do not know what the mean is, okay. The variance is equal to 1. So, there is something known about this distribution, but something that is not known. The mean is not known, for instance. Or you could say that P1 to PK, they are all distributions in the set 0, 1. So, so what do we know? P1 is equal to Gaussian distribution with mean mu 1 and variance 1, okay. Same thing, Pk is Gaussian distribution with mean mu k and variance 1, but do not know mu 1 to mu k, okay. Or P1 is a or P, P k P i is distribution which support 0 comma 1 okay. So, you know something about the distribution, but not the complete characterization of the distribution. So, what do you think, uh, how should we go about formulating it as a problem? It is a stochastic optimization problem. We studied three ways of solving stochastic optimization. One is the usual way, you take the expected cost and you expected cost or expected profit and you want to maximize it. The second method was risk sensitive, okay. You take the exponent, expo you take expected value of the exponential of the cost or expect exponential of the profit and then you want to minimize or maximize it. Um, what was the third way? Regret, right. So, it seems like instead of trying to formalize it as maximizing the expected reward, we probably should formalize it as minimizing the expected regret, okay. Because regret is easy to compute in some sense than uh, computing the maximum expected reward. Because if you want to maximize the expected reward, I need to know what the distribution is and that is something we do not know here. So, minimize expected regret. So, based on this history, what is the total reward? So, R t, well, let me say R of t, that summation of x i s, s equals 1 to t, okay, that is my reward. Okay. 
okay so we need to minimize the expected regret so what is regret anyone remembers what the definition of regret is maybe you can come up with the definition because of your some past events that might have occurred to you okay what what's the definition what's the mathematical definition of regret no you have to qualify it a little bit more actual value when so it would be expected reward expected reward if i knew p1 to pk minus expected reward since i don't know p1 to pk okay that's the regret if i knew something something that was that was unknown to me if i knew it i would have taken some action and i would have accumulated some reward so that's this variable but because i don't know that variable uh i'm going to subtract the expected reward uh from from that particular number and i want to minimize this particular quantity that's regret yes right 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 that's a very good point so his point is i'm assuming these excites to be iid whereas in some cases especially in case of slot machines they they're not necessarily iid there is some inherent state and as soon as you pull the arm the state gets changed and then the state remains constant until you pull the arm again okay so that problem was one of the first problems that was solved back in 1971 but it's fairly difficult to describe so i'm not doing it in the class okay i mean it's it's not like i haven't done it i have done it in the past and i've realized that nobody understands it so i decided not to cover that in the class okay so i was playing my own multi arm bandit game in the past okay i don't know what the response to various topics is going to be in the class okay and based on the responses now i have adapted this class and so i feel that this topic in the simplest possible manner if i express this if i explain this topic in the simplest possible manner it gives the maximum reward expected reward to the entire class okay so that's why i'm talking about this uh, this topic anyway and as time progresses i will keep changing the topics and see which one gives me the maximum expected reward which is essentially sei's score that i will get at the end of the semester right so uh, so anyways going back to the problem this is what i want to want to minimize so what is the expected reward if i knew p1 to pk so let's see uh so let's say so what's the expected reward so that would be well if i knew p1 to pk i will know mu1 to mu k right mu1 mu2 mu3 all the way up to mu k so which arm am i going to play all the time maximum mean, maximum mean? okay so the expected reward will be let's say at time t will be t multiplied by mu max where mu max equals to max of mu i 1 less than i less than k
that's my expected reward. Actually, I should write maximum expected reward at time t because uh, you're doing an optimization within this computation of expected reward. So this is my expected reward, t multiplied by mu max. Okay, so I'll pull the arm that has the maximum mean every time if I knew what p1 to pk is. If I knew which drug is most effective, I'll prescribe that drug to every patient who comes with a headache. Okay, if I knew which web design gets me the maximum revenue, okay, or maximum uh, uh, mean revenue, I'm going to use that website design for pretty much all the websites that I'm going to make in the future, right? So that's the idea. What is the expected reward? Because I did not know P1 to PK, well, that's going to be, so let's see, let's see what the expected reward is. So this is my, this is my reward. So what's the expected reward? What is the expected RT? Well, that's summation S equals 1 to T, X, I, S, the expected value, which is equal to summation S equals 1 to T, mu I T, mu I S. Okay, so mu is the mean of uh, distribution P. And let me write it as summation I equals 1 to K, T I multiplied by mu I. Where T I, what is T I? number of times arm I was pulled from T equals 1 to from S equals 1 to S equals T. Okay. Actually, you know, I, I should probably put T i of, of T. Because T i depends on T. Uh, it's not independent of T. So T 1 is how many times I have pulled arm 1, T 2 is how many times I have pulled arm 2 and so on, all the way up to arm k. Is that clear? Setting is clear? So what is the regret? What is the expected regret? At time t, expected regret at time t, that's uh, summation i equals 1 to k I should write mu max minus mu i into t i t So that's the expected regret. You know, one thing that I uh, probably forgot to write, 
is that this ti of t is also a random variable because I don't know how many times I'm going to pull arm i until time t. Same thing here. So there should be an expected value outside of this as well, okay? Because we are com computing the expected regret um, in this case. Okay, so please put a expectation of T i of T, an expectation of T i of T. Okay, yeah. Right, so it turns out that minimizing the expected regret is the same as uh, minimizing the number of times you pull non-optimal i, okay? Because it's just sum of some positive number, this is positive, right? Mu max minus mu i, this is positive number multiplied by the expected number of times you pulled arm i. So what's the fundamental result on this expected regret? Any, any question so far with the formulation? Okay, so we don't know the distribution. We want to maximize reward. It's equivalent to saying I want to minimize the expected regret. It turns out expected regret can be uh, derived pretty easily, very simple expression which is the difference in the means multiplied by expected number of times you've pulled um, i. Okay. So what's the fundamental result? What is the fundamental result? No matter what you do, you will accumulate some regret. Okay. How much is that regret going to be? Because you don't know the distributions, you will accumulate some regret. What is the fundamental lower bound on the regret. So let's go back to 1985 and talk about a seminal result by Lai and Robbins. They were statistician in Stanford. under reasonable assumptions on P1 to PK. If limit T goes to infinity, uh, RT over, so RT is my expected regret. Uh, let me write it as regret at time T. Regret at time T over T raised to A is equal to zero. For all A greater than zero, then limit of t goes to infinity, rt will be greater than equal to regret at time t over log t will be greater than equal to some constant. And when I write regret there, I mean expected regret, not the true regret. 
So let's parse through uh, this result. What does it mean? What does this result mean? Okay, so what is a reasonable regret that we are all comfortable with? Okay, what is a reasonable regret that we are all comfortable with in this particular situation? Well, what they suggested, Lai and Robin suggested that our regret should be of the order of t raised to a, okay, or rather it should be smaller than t raised to a for any a greater than 0. So, what does that mean? What do I mean? Well, my regret at time t, so remember what do we want? We want our regret to be as close to 0 as possible, right? That's what it means to uh, be able to do the best you can without the knowledge of p1 to pk, right? So we want the average regret, regret of t over t to be close to 0. Okay, so this is the average regret, average expected regret. But what Lai and Robin suggest that, you know what, why only average regret? Why not consider regret of t to be less than some constant multiplied by t raised to a where a is some positive number, okay? So we would ideally want the regret, let's say a was 0 0.1, so we want the regret at time t should be less than some constant multiplied by t raised to 0 0.1, okay, or t raised to 0 0.01. So what Lai and Robin suggest is, you know, it's reasonable to assume that regret over t raised to a as t goes to infinity should go to 0 no matter what value of a you choose as long as it is strictly positive. Okay? That is reasonable to assume. Uh, I mentioned that when a is equal to 1, so that is this case, that is average regret, it wants average regret to go to 0, but well it should be true for any value of, any value of a, not necessarily a equals 1. When a equals 1, what you have is average regret. So what they prove is, if you come up with a policy of which arm to pull at every point of time, and if this assumption is satisfied, no matter what policy you use, okay, as you can see, this is already a very stringent uh, re requirement on a regret. This is a stringent requirement on the regret. But even with this stringent requirement, no matter what you do, your regret over log t will always be greater than or equal to some constant. Okay, and the constant is specified in the paper. Okay. What that what that means is for every value of t, well not for every value, but for large enough value of t, for large t, your regret at time t will be greater than or equal to some constant multiplied by log of t and this log is log base e okay so this is natural log so no matter what you do your regret with 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 the best possible strategy that you can have your regret will always be larger than some constant multiplied by log of t as long as you pick t sufficiently large so you have played this game for a long time your regret will be always larger than some constant multiplied by log t So what would you like to do, okay? So I'm not very happy because what Lai and Robin said 
is that no matter what I do, I'm going to accumulate a log t regret, okay, order of log t regret. So the goal, the new goal, okay, it's a fairly difficult paper to read, by the way, so, uh, so read it at your own risk. Okay, this is a very, uh, it's a gross simpli simplification of the actual result, but this is the input of the result. Uh, but anyways, the goal now is to find a policy, find a decision policy such that the regret at time t under that policy is less than equal to some constant multiplied by log of t. Okay, some constant. Uh, it doesn't have to be this particular constant. Some other, some other constant multiplied by log of t. So that's your, that's your goal now. Okay, and what is the regret? Well, regret is summation of mu max minus mu i expected value of t i of t. That's my regret, right? i equals 1 to k. So naturally, these other constant would have some term consi consisting of mu max minus mu i, so that's obvious. But what you see by looking at this expression is that you want your expected value of t i of t to be equal to log t or somewhere close to log t, right? That's what you would ideally want to have. If you want your regret to be of the order of log t, it directly means that your expected value of t i of t should be of the order of log t, at least for, not at least, but for non-optimal values of i. Okay. Is that clear? Does that make sense? Okay. So Lie Robin said regret is greater than order of log t. So what I want to do? Well, I want to come up with a policy so that the regret is less than equal to order of log t. What that entails is I pull the non-optimal arms in such a manner that I pull it uh, equal to or almost equal to log t times. So of course, Lie and Robin suggested uh, some some policies in their paper for some specific class of distributions p1 to pk they suggested some policy that would achieve this achieve this uh, regret okay so regret would be some other constant plus multiplied by log t but those policies were extremely difficult okay very difficult to compute uh, and very difficult to implement if you have to implement it in practice So then people were, I mean people like the result, but what do we do? I mean it's difficult to implement, I, I can't do much about, I mean even though it's a nice theoretical result, I can't do much about it. So then something happened uh, in the decade following 1995, okay, so, uh, so people figured out that if I allow this other constant to be much, much larger than this constant, then I can come up with very simple decision policies that can achieve this inequality, okay? Okay, so what's the, what's the point? 
if I allow this other constant to be much, much larger than this constant, I mean not much, not like 10 raised to 5 multiplied by this constant, but just slightly larger than this constant, I can get a simpler decision policy which is easy to implement. Okay, so let me give you one such decision policy which comes from Two thousand one or two thousand two, I I don't remember uh, what the actual date is, but the idea is to so at time t pull j star t, or rather, let me let me write it as uh, at t. define index, I want to define an index, let's say phi, I, I want to define an index to arm i, and what should that index be? Well, it should be x bar i, which is the empirical average of the reward, dis the, the reward that you have received from arm i, plus square root 2 log t over t i of t. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't depend only on t, but it also depends on the history h t because this depends on the history. This is completely dependent on time and the number of times you have pulled arm um, i, and this is the empirical average. Empirical average reward from arm um, i. Okay. And so their algorithm is, I'm going to pull the arm, so I star of t is argmax p i of t, i equals 1 to k. Okay, that's their result. Well, not the only result, they have several other policies, but this is the simplest policy that achieves regret of this type. Okay. Of course, this constant that you see here is bigger than the constant that you see here, but not too not too much bigger. Okay, it's it's. Uh, yeah, so it's it's different from this. It's diff this other constant is different from this particular constant. Okay, but the good thing is that simple policy. If you want to achieve very close to this regret, very close to the optimal regret or optimal lower bound on the regret, you have to come up with very complicated policies, very difficult to compute. But if you allow for your regret to grow a little bit larger than the the best lower value. You can have a much simpler, to uh, much simpler decision policies that can give you equally good result. Okay, and that has made this paper very. Uh, I mean, it's one of the celebrated papers, even though it's not. It's written after 2000 uh, because of this very reason. Okay, because uh, they came up with a very simple policy that can achieve log t regret. And how do you prove that this will achieve log t regret? Well, if you play according to this policy, what you can show is that expected value of t i t is, is of the order of log of t for every non-optimal non-optimal 
i okay which is what we wanted so of course proving these results require you to know a lot of probability which uh, is something that we haven't studied here but at least understanding the solution doesn't really require a lot of probability background and uh, and that's all i have for multi arm bandit it's uh, it's 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 it has been now it, it now it is being used for by google and facebook and many other companies for various machine learning tasks uh robot grasping uh exploration versus exploitation so if you have if you are sending a robot to assess damage due to fire or something um uh, or uh or doing some sort of exploration uh but at the same time you want to make sure that you focus on areas that need maximum attention uh you get into these trade offs what do you do whether you should spend time exploring other arms or whether you should spend time just pulling this particular arm because you're getting a decent reward from this arm okay so what is decent okay maybe there is some other arm that is much more decent than this arm that you are currently pulling okay so there is this trade off here between exploration and exploitation and this is something that we all understand that's the empirical average but this is the term that is forcing you to explore okay it's forcing you to explore other arms that have not been pulled too many times so far okay so this will this term will kick in and it will force you to play other arms that you probably haven't explored enough okay and of course it eventually the regret the expected regret that you will accumulate will be of the order of log t right 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 uh yes that's a good point so his point is if you have if you're taking a drug and you have of course the effect and the side effects how do you take into account the side effect well you see this policy or rather this formulation requires you to project the entire feature of the drug onto a real line okay so you will probably have some weights associated with the effect and the side effect okay and then you will combine them together linearly or perhaps non linearly and you will come up with some reward that each drug is giving you okay yeah that takes into account so in fact if you go to any physician and can give you a drug so they have this disclaimer which kind of tells you um the drug the drug is more effective than other drugs for your condition okay so those of you who are going to be entrepreneurs and will build your own web pages keep this in mind okay the design is important i mean uh, i was reading a book and it said that uh, google has made many changes to the colors okay so it's light blue dark blue some different colors of blue and they did this experiment with different colors of blue and figured out which blue is most attractive to most human beings so that they get maximum clicks on their web page okay i, I don't know whether it's true or not i mean it's written somewhere in in the book and so uh, these kind of things happen okay where do you place your advertisement how which advertisement should i place at this point of time during the day so people have done this uh, analysis for a very long time and this one allows you to do that analysis automatically and provably and and what it also does is it proves that you will achieve a log t regret which is very desirable um because that's what you can achieve right it's easy by the way it's easy to achieve a regret that is of the order of t okay just keep pulling one arm so pull arm 1 2 3 then 1 2 3 then 1 2 3 1 2 3 and you get regret that is of the order of t okay so you'd want to avoid that and you get regret of the order of log t here 
So that's all I have. On Monday, we'll have a review lecture for uh, static optimization, and on, on Wednesday, we'll have a review lecture for dynamic optimization. We'll see you guys next week. There's no class on Friday.